Hello. In the previous episode, we saw how the T-Con board produces the AVDD and VDD voltage, thanks to the DC-DC converter. In this episode, we will see the mode of production of the voltage called VGH and VGL, always thanks to the same DC-DC converter. The voltages VGH and VGL are necessary to control the TFT transistors that are integrated in the screen. VGH is the acronym for voltage gate high. The VGH is the on, in other words the transistor is in closing mode. The VGL is the acronym for voltage gate low. This voltage puts the transistor in open or off mode. To control each pixel individually, the screen incorporates specific transistors known as TFT which is the acronym for Thin Film Transistor. Their schematic representation and as for a MOSFET. The sub-pixel also includes a capacitor. The VGH and VGL control this TFT through the gate. On the electronic board and on the diagrams, VGH can have another name. We find, V on, VG on, VDDG. The average value of this voltage is between 20 and 30 volts. This is only an average and the value indicated may vary from one board to another. In our example of a DC-DC converter, the VGH is called VG on. Its value is 35 volts with a low amperage of 50 milliamps. The VGL also has other names. We find the name V off, VG off, VEEG. VGL has a negative value. The average value of this voltage is between minus 5 to minus 9 volts. In our example the VGL is called VG off, its value is minus 6 volts with also a low amperage of 100 milliamps. The obtaining of these two voltages, one of which is negative, is done by means of a circuit called charge pump converter. Charge pumps are DC to DC converters that can increase, decrease or invert an input voltage. They are used in applications requiring low power. It is a circuit without inductance and it is composed of diodes, capacitors, electronic switch like MOSFETs and an oscillating circuit. The charge pump converter is also known as a voltage doubler and as the Dixon charge pump. Here is its working principle. The circuit includes a current source with a voltage of value V, four switches and three electrolytic capacitors named respectively C1, C2 and C3. When switches 1 and 2 are closed, the two capacitors C1 and C2, which are connected in parallel, will each be charged to the value of V. The two capacitors C1 and C2 are then disconnected from the current source by opening the switches number 1 and 2. The circuit is rearranged so that the capacitors C1 and C2 are in series, according to this diagram. When switches number 3 and 4 are closed, capacitor C3, called the output capacitor, is in turn charged to the value of 2 times V, i.e. twice the input voltage, hence the other name of this circuit, voltage doubler. In reality and in practice, the circuit is made according to the following diagram. The capacitor C1 is the input capacitor. It is the one that is constantly in contact with the current source. The capacitor C2 placed in the middle is the charge pump capacitor. The C3 capacitor is the output capacitor. The four switches are rearranged according to this configuration. During the first phase, switches number 2 and 3 are closed. This leads to the setting in parallel of the two capacitors C1 and C2 with the current generator. In the second phase, switches 2 and 3 are open simultaneously while switches 1 and 4 are also closed simultaneously. C1 and C2 are in a series configuration and at the same time they are in a parallel configuration with respect to capacitor C3. The latter will be charged to twice the input voltage. To obtain a negative voltage at the output, the circuit is rearranged as follows. The switch number 3 is moved according to this configuration. The polarity of capacitors C2 and C3 is reversed. The closing sequence of the switches will also be different. In the first phase, switch number 1 and 3 are closed. In this configuration the input capacitor C1 is paralleled with the capacitor C2, which is the pump load capacitor. When the charge of capacitor C2 is reached, the second phase begins. Switches number 1 and 3 are opened, followed quickly by the closing of switches number 2 and 4. Capacitor C2, known as the charge pump capacitor, is in parallel configuration with the output capacitor C3. C2 will deliver a voltage equal to the generator voltage but with an inverted polarity. In our example, 
DC-DC Max Converter 17113. The charge pump circuit uses instead of manual switches, electronic switches controlled by an oscillator. The circuit also includes diodes and voltage regulators. The principle of operation of the charge pump in this configuration is as follows. Consider VCC equal to 5 volts. The oscillator circuit will generate a periodic signal, i.e. one that repeats. This signal varies between two voltage values. It takes the value of 0 volts when it is at a low level. When it is at the high level, it provides in our example of 5 volts. When the signal is at a low level, therefore 0 volts, at the output of the first diode we find the 5 volts corresponding to VCC. This value is then at the output after the second diode. The output capacitor is charged to this value. When the periodic signal of the oscillator circuit goes to the high level, the 5 volts coming from this circuit will be added to the 5 volts coming from VCC. At the output of the first diode, the voltage doubles to 10 volts. It is at this value that the output capacitor will be charged. It should be noted that in the charge pump circuit, the last diode and the output capacitor have the role of smoothing the output voltage. On the other hand, the value of the output voltage is the double of the input voltage, considering that the diodes used do not consume any voltage, but in reality, the diode consumes a certain voltage to be able to function. This is called the threshold voltage of the diode. This value must be subtracted from the desired theoretical voltage. To limit the voltage drop at the passage of the diodes, we use diodes with Fable threshold voltages as is the case with Schottky diodes. It is possible with the charge pump circuit to obtain a voltage that is the opposite of the input voltage, i.e. a negative voltage. It is necessary to invert the direction of the diodes and capacitors to change the direction of their polarity and wire the circuit according to this diagram. On the diagram of the DC-DC converter, we recognize the circuit called negative charge pump. There are the two diodes and the two capacitors. The value of VGL, here named VGOF, is determined thanks to two resistors connected in series and which realizes the classic voltage divider. A feedback circuit and a regulator allows to control the value of the output voltage. The positive charge pump circuit has some particularities compared to the circuit presented before. In the classical circuit, called voltage doubler, there are two diodes and two capacitors. In the diagram of this circuit, there are four diodes and four capacitors. On the other hand, the supply voltage of this circuit is made from the voltage called AVDD. It is the analog voltage VDD produced by this same DC-DC chip, thanks to its boost converter. To increase the value of the output voltage, the same circuit can be recopied one or more times depending on the desired voltage. By adding diodes and capacitors in this configuration, we increase the value of the output voltage. Hence the other name of this circuit, the voltage multiplier. The voltage VGH called here VG on, has a much higher value, compared to that of VGL. The latter was minus 6 volts. In this example, VGH which is 35 volts but with a low amperage of 50 milliamps. As mentioned earlier, it is from AVDD that the voltage VGH is produced. Finally, the circuit includes a voltage divider consisting of two resistors. This allows to adjust the value of the output voltage. The latter is also controlled by a feedback circuit and a volt regulator. Goodbye, and see you in the next video.